you better yet if you could join on over at askdane.com in the vocal event and uh, go in the chat room and uh, say hi and let us know if you can hear us okay. Um, that would be great. I see a number of you guys are jumping on already. Um, we are very privileged. I'm here at Skip Summer School and we're going to be having a conversation uh, with Joe Busink, a hero of mine and a, a fantastic legend in our industry uh, for a lot of reasons. And I have him off camera while I'm saying these things because he would be pushing the camera away or doing something like he's doing right now to my, to my left. Um, <laughs> handing me money. <laughs> Joker. Um, but it is a real privilege and, uh, and I'm grateful to, for Skip's uh, Summer School for even happening because it gives us the chance to do this sort of thing. Um, and uh, really, really glad to do it. I'm going to check a couple things to make sure we're recording okay. Give me one second. Um, and then we'll, we'll bring Joe on in just a, a minute. Um, let's see, there you are. Okay. Well, um, Joe uh, it, it kind of goes without saying that Joe is someone who uh, we all, if you've been in this industry for any length of time, uh, you understand that it's um, very significant what he's done in our industry as a leader and as a, as a practitioner. And you need to have a little context. Joe just gave a platform um, presentation to, I don't know, probably 300 people. And uh, as a speaker, I get that it's really tough to be on that kind of high and then immediately walk off the stage and get into a conversation. But I know for me, it's really enjoyable when I can just have it be relational and connecting. So in getting Joe on, um, my invitation for him is that it would really just be a conversation between he and I and you and that you join in that thing, that you don't just be a spectator, that you be a participant. And uh, the way you do that is you click on the lower right-hand corner, there's a little uh, light bulb and you can click on that and uh, people can, uh, you can leave, leave your questions, that sort of thing, and, and engage that way. But would love for you to join in and uh, I think if you do, you'll, you'll be grateful for it. But really, it's just a conversation. And without further ado, I'll bring in Joe. So, hi, Joe. Hey, how are you doing, Dan? Good, glad you're here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, it's, um, there's a kind of an awkwardness to this whole thing where we're sitting awkwardly on the couch close to each other. And, okay. And, but if you're comfortable with it. I'm totally cool. Um, Joe, I, uh, I'll just get this out of the way. I'm yep. a fan and I've been a fan for a long time and uh, there's even been moments providentially where I've had a chance to interact with you socially with, with Gary Funk's wedding and yeah. um, I remember I got a chance I was writing Fast Track and I was I had a chance to even interview you yep. in the middle of the manuscript and, and uh, those of you who have read the book you've read that section what Joe has shared and, and really I, I kind of wanted to extend that conversation to today and even on the heels of hearing you present it seems like um, at core, the point I heard you say over and over again was this idea that as a photographer, uh, the greatest asset isn't isn't our photography per se, it's really the person, yes. the creative, the inner yes. person. And I'm wondering, just to get us started, um, if you could just spend a few minutes just sharing a little bit about kind of what you mean by that yep. and, and give some context for the folks who are listening. Sure, right sure, sure. Well, I've been saying this for a while, I've been standing on this soapbox for probably a year or two by now, but I've come to realize that when I pitch to my clients, it's not necessarily the work that I'm pitching because uh, what, when I started thinking about it, they've already seen my work online. So they're there because they've liked it enough. And I think probably without them even being aware, they're there to really see who the person's going to be that's going to show up at their wedding. Mm. So that's when I realized that um, what I'm pitching is me. I'm pitching who I am, who I will be that day, and it made me start thinking about how important it is uh, to think about who you are as a person uh, and as a photographer, and how that impacts the work, how that impacts your clients, uh, and that's why I say that the most important thing about photography is who you are. Hmm. Not necessarily the gear that you're shooting with, but who you are, because that's ultimately the product you're trying to sell. Hmm. So if I'm people listening in, and, and it's a lot of the folks who are in my audience tend to be either in startup mode or restart mode, yeah. and they're kind of in this reassess. And really, the purpose of this this broadcast is for people to to not get all that they need, but to get maybe yeah. one or two things for yeah. thirty minutes a week, uh, yeah. and that they can go and apply directly yeah. to their business. So, given what you just shared, yeah, um, what what would 
if you're in startup mode or restart mode, knowing what you know now, um, and given what you said about the core is the actual person that you're selling, uh, or pitching, or presenting, or inviting with, uh, what advice would you give to someone in that mode? Because it, it can be overwhelming, because I, I understand it philosophically, yeah. but on the ground practically, what do you do with that? Yeah. I think what happens is that if you get in touch with who you are, and you start discovering it by virtue of having to look at the favorite images you've taken, you'll come to see who you are through those images. Mm -hmm. Just lock yourself up for a little while, and earnestly study those images and you'll find yourself in those images but when you have access to that information and you are in front of a client you can't help but be passionate about how you speak because you have an understanding of who you are and why you love photography so much. I fully believe that every person that uh, is a photographer is doing so because they love it first and foremost. Secondarily, yes it's a business. but. Primarily, I think people love photography, that's why they pick up a camera, they're interested in it, it, it they, it's a way of expressing themselves. Well, it's the same thing with wedding photography though. When you go to the wedding, you're actually not just documenting, you're expressing yourself. I think you're expressing how you feel about the wedding, not just what happens at the wedding. Um, and I think if you're in touch with that and are able to somehow verbally communicate that with your prospective client in front of you, um, it, you stand a better chance of being hired than someone who just coldly hands a book over and says, Here, here's my work. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so I'm, again, I'm listening real carefully and, and uh, I'm trying to put myself in the position of, of the folks who are in that startup restart mode. And, and I, I mean, on many levels, I feel like I'm in that mode on a regular basis. Yeah, but every 18 months, here. I'm like, here, yeah. here we go again. Same here, same here. And um, I think sometimes I have a people pleaser inside of me. Yeah. And, I, and what I make up in my head is some of you guys do too. And and sometimes I, it's hard for me to slow down enough. To, like, for instance, you said, to pull up and look at my images. It's hard for me to be patient to go, okay, what really is mine? And what is, I'm just really trying to please a customer or yeah. a client or, or just my friend. Like, yeah. if you saw my images, if you told me you like this image, well, all of a sudden I'm like, that might be my most hated image, but all of a sudden it becomes my favorite because right. I just want to be liked right. by you or whatever. Right. How do you fight that, well, that dynamic? The first thing I do is when I get the proofs back, I find in that proofs from the winning what, last week or whatever, the ones that I like. Huh. That already sticks out. So I don't really care what the client says at that point because it's me that I, I'm doing it because I love shooting and so I have to find my little jewels my little babies that I've fallen in love with that I actually when you think about it when I shoot it I know it's there it's that one where you go yes yeah yeah yeah. yeah. okay we yeah. all have that you guys too okay <laughs> we all get those and that's the image I kind of take home with me that's the kind of image I hang out with and that's the image that really expresses who I am regardless of what the client thinks. Uh, yeah regardless it doesn't, make of, doesn't make any difference to me because when that's the image that I show, that's the image I talk about it with the same mm. fervor, the, the fever pitch mm. that I have. Uh -huh, My uh -huh. gosh, it's because I'm excited about it. Mm. All that client needs to see that's sitting in front of me is how excited I am about what I'm doing. Mm. So, okay. <laughs> it's, it's funny because um, I guess what flashed my mind, I can't believe I've never thought of this before, but. I'm thinking about, okay, so I open up my images in the Lightroom and I'm tagging or doing whatever I'm doing, I'm culling the images. What, how brilliant would it be to just have a private collection? Yeah, that's what I'm I like, do. It doesn't matter, it doesn't what, matter anybody what anybody else thinks. thinks. These are mine. And mind you, I, my wife edits my stuff, uh -huh. which I, I, I need a woman to look at my work yeah. because I get a little close. <laughs> and there's other reasons too, but yeah. um, she has often taken stuff and dumped them that were my favorites. Yeah. So I go back through the edited portion of it and pull my babies back out, out of the fire, uh -huh. and stick them in the private collection. That's yeah. exactly what I do. I yeah. have it in a private collection, those are mine. And then I sit with them and, and I, I do take some time off, I have a glass of wine, why do I like them, you know? Or I just sit with them for a while. And that's the stuff I can talk about. So typically those will end up being in my portfolio. And then when I pitch it, man, I come off like, oh my God. Because you, know? you actually believe. Yes. Like this because is it is. Yeah. It, it, that's me. And, yeah. and, and that image means this to me. Yeah. This is how it made me feel. This is how it made them feel. Yeah. Um, and I can talk from that place that's, uh, you know, really involves the other client now. When you look at pictures, it's, it's a three-way conversation. It's, it's between me, the subject, and then the viewer. So now that I have that prospective client in front of me, it's now between me and the viewer as looking at the image. So it's, it's, it, when, I, when, it's, when they see me talk like this, oh my God, I'm so excited about this image. It's like you're and, introducing them to a friend. Yes, and, it's, and it was <laughs> shot 10 years ago. Huh. Okay, and they go subconsciously, wow, 
he still feels that way about the like, shot 10 like, years ago right and he still remembers oh my god you know that's who i want so it it, it comes back back down to your pitch you're pitching yourself you really are. The work speaks for itself. The client's either going to love or hate your work, but if they're there in front of you, they've seen you work online, they're there because they like it enough to hear the rest of it. Mm. So, I, I've never heard anyone talk about their images like they're people. And you've mentioned like your babies yes. and your friends. Yeah. And, and and to treat it like an intern. I've never heard anybody use that metaphor before of like, when I finally get to see the clients after an event or when I'm, I'm thinking of a shirt, it's like, okay, I'm going to introduce you to some of my very special, my children. Yeah. And right. Let, let me see. Like, and when I think of how I introduce my kids, yeah. I'm like, I love them so differently, but so yeah, so fully. Yes. It's like ah, oh, yeah. Let me tell you what Abigail. Well, yes. You know, yes. I think I'm yes. going to start naming my photog they, yeah. photographs by children. By names. children. <laughs> I, why not? I think that's great. You want to see Abigail? It's a 16 by 20. <laughs> that's right. I love it. No, no, that's no. Right. Absolutely. But but that's true. Because that's why I say, you know, my favorite photos are the ones that speak not just of the moment, but they speak of me mm. and how I feel about that moment. Mm. And, and what so, if you're having a bad moment? Well, you know, and that's, there's times where I've had uh, weddings that were, where some heavy duty stuff happened and yeah. clearly I had visual, yeah, yeah, visual commentary was there where someone else noticed, wow, you really made some commentary <laughs> here by these choices of why, images. Why are all the images in dark corners? Yes, really, so, <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. So yeah, no, absolutely, you that know. Um, what I do before I go to a gig for a half an hour, I meditate. I clearly meditate uh, <laughs> oh for about a half an hour. Tony Corbell's giving you Tony Corbell, that's his hand <laughs> right there, folks. Beautiful. Tony Corbell. Oh, you, you saw like your own life. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> That's totally fine. <laughs> I mean, you know, know what? The, the best part is... I've seen you speak before, so that was fabulous. Isn't he fantastic? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, it's thank okay. So it's much. okay, guys. Thank you. That anyway, was a little, so, little cameo by Tony and Bob. That was Tony's hand. Yeah, so I don't know where I was, but... Uh, we were introducing children. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, where were we? Because it was so good. I wanted to hear more. I know, I know, I know, I know. Oh my god, oh my god, I was on oh, sorry. it too. It's all good. Okay, so uh, let's take a question here online. Yeah. Um, this is a question from Danny Mendoza. Hey, Danny, how's it going? Uh, besides the awesome experience, I'm I have in my head how you're going to answer this, yeah. but I'm curious. Besides the awesome experience, what else can we offer our clients? How can it make it? How can we make it better? Um, okay, so first of all, when I show and pitch my work. I don't think about what my clients' needs are because it's very clear to me that if they don't get what I do, that's not my client. Mm -hmm. So the people that end up hiring me, hire me based on the stuff that I love and that I'm so attached to, that I'm so excited about and passionate about. So it's like a no-brainer, we're, we're reading the same book, we're on the same page. So I never have to think about my clients in that way. So that said, one of the things I do, and I, I, I hear this often when you say, you know, I show slideshows and I try to sell prints because I hear you sell prints. And then I ask them, so do you show prints? And they say, well, no, I, I show them slideshows, they come to my studio, and I do all these montages and whatnot. And then that's all they ask for. Well, guys, gals, they ask and buy what you show them. If you don't show them printed work like I do, 1114 signed and matted, then they won't buy those unless you show them those. So what I offer my clients, hopefully, are pieces of art connected to their wedding. That's what I'm after. I'm after photographing, uh, you know, from an artistic perspective, their wedding and their memories. I, I want to be able to give them images that 20 years later, when they look at them, they go, my God, I still remember what I was feeling in that moment. And I think that is what I want to give them, is, is something that they can look back at, relive like it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so what you want to offer them are those beautiful moments that is them. In other words, every wedding to me is unique. There is no two weddings that are alike. So all the moments that unfold are unique to that wedding. So I tend to focus on the PJ format and that style of shooting because those moments will be different from another wedding. So that's what I, I really, if you start doing nothing but traditional setups and you do it the same way because it's a safe thing to do, what you're doing is cookie cutter stuff yep. and they, they basically become from one wedding to the next exactly the same. Yep. And what difference, what makes the difference between one wedding and another are the moments. So, by the way, a little shout out to Danny. Danny, uh, we did this little conference of, of who, of all the speakers at Skip Summer School, who who would people want to hear from? And Danny was first in to say, you won. Yeah. Scott Foreman was a close second, but uh, uh, 
Danny was the guy who said, please, 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 can I hear from Joe if you think? And, and, uh, Thank so, you, Danny. So a little shout out there. All right. Um, and by the way, I just want to give you guys a, a quick reminder here. Because this conversation is brief uh, and, and Joe's got to go catch a plane here shortly, um, if you want to engage in the conversation, uh, Again, don't join the event. Some of you are, you, you saw Joe Busink on the Twitter feed and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna come. May, I've never been to Ask Game before. This is unfamiliar. What you need to do is in the lower right hand corner, just go ahead and click the uh, the question button or the little light bulb, tech, and then the text questions and then start writing. And some of the brave of you might even set up your video camera and actually you can join us online and we can take your question live and you can be on here with Joe and I. So I inv cool. invite you to do that. And then, um, but I'm looking at the list and there's seven participants, we know who you guys all are, and there's 20 some odd spectators. If you're in the spectator seats, I feel for you, because you're missing out. It's so much, so much more fun to get on the field, in the game, join us. And of course, those of you guys who are gonna watch after the fact on replay, uh, uh, that's great too, but the more you can kind of check in and, and join us while we're here live, that's great. Now, um, before we take Katrina Wheeler's question, I was struck by when you're answering Danny's question about this idea of what you provide for people and it seems like more than anything, and I, we've shared on this mm. privately, but you are just, you're a master storyteller. And it seems like you're, you're telling, whether you're using the, the instrument of your camera, or you're the instrument of showing, mm. introducing them to a friend right. in a print, right. or you're just talking to them, it's like you're, it's almost like you're narrating their life. Yeah. And, and as you do that, it, it's, it seems like a forgotten part for a lot of photographers that that's part of their job, yes. if not their whole job. Yes. And, and I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about this whole idea of storytelling with like all the time, no matter what, what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. How important is that for you? I think storytelling is huge. And, and that's why in, in my pitch, that's what sells me. Is I'm not selling a service. I don't want to sell a service. What I want to sell or pitch and hopefully be booked on is the experience. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm doing an experience. That's what I want to have them get. Mm -hmm. Is that the experience of having me there over someone else is what wins out. And the only way that can happen is if you start telling stories, not just about the images, but again, about yourself. And you do that through by virtue of telling people how you feel about the image taking, what what it does for you, how you know, and it, it, in your voice, in the way that you speak, uh, and how how you present your work is how people get how much you love what you do. Right. I believe that every person out there, all of you listening, love what you do. You're Joe's, passionate. Joe's talking to you right now. Yeah, you need I to am, listen. I am, I am. <laughs> You're passionate about, I don't believe there's one photographer out there that decided to, oh, maybe there's one, I don't know. But that took up this profession, this vocation, because it's simply it's a good job. I think it's because you love it. You picked up a camera, you found the experience compelling, and it was magical, exactly. And, and so that's where you want to come from, whether you pitch the client, whether you shoot the gig, you need to be able to tap into that part of your soul. And when we, even when we start, because we're thinking about it as a business, or when we've been doing it for a while and we lost track of it, we need to go back to tapping into the reason we picked up the camera to begin with, mm. which is the passionate part of it. It is about business, but it needs to take a back seat to, buy, buy, to what we love, and that is to pick up the camera and shoot with, and to tell stories with. Because it's not just their story, it's your story. When you pick up the camera and shoot, you're telling your story as well. You know, let's talk a little bit about that, because this idea of passion and, and authentic passion from your soul, uh, There's, I think there's a lot of folks that are listening in who, at least for me, if I'm listening in, I, you're, you're compelling. You're, you know, you, you're in a place where no one feels like they've made it, and I get that. But there's a there's a degree to which it's not work for you to get passionate about these things. Mm -hmm. It is who you actually are. Right. And some folks who are listening might be tempted to go, okay, what's the magic trick? Like, how do I? I just want to learn how to. It's too too simple to, simple to say this, but to pretend to be passionate right. or something. And right. and. Would you encourage these people to just just stop and slow down and back up and until you're passionate, then do it? Do you fake it? Do you make it? Like, yeah. what? What? How do you? How do you get that? Well, this is where I go back to suggesting to people: look, when you started with photography and you picked up the camera and you grabbed some shots, and at first you went, ah, oh, yuck, oh, uh -huh. horrible, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and then you went, whoa, okay, take that whoa shot, go home and find it. Trust me, okay. Pull it to the side. Grab some of your favorite images you've taken, not someone else, what you've taken. Lock yourself up in the bedroom for, I don't know, a couple days. Okay, give yourself a break. <laughs> Grab a glass of wine and, and earnestly study the image because what you're going to find out is 
in those images, you're going to find yourself. Uh, at some level, you'll find why you shoot this way because there might be a, a common thread, commonality between all the images, an angle you might be taking, the lens that you're using, uh, the moments that you that there was a decisive moment when you captured something that unfolded in front of you says something about you and if you can really look that's where your passion sprung from for all of you that's where your passion sprung and if you can tap into that that's going to eventually define your style and that's what will hap make uh, happen quicker that development of style because people are always searching you know I don't know what my style is well the style is in you and if you can just access that by virtue of being conscious or at least semi-conscious of it and coming to a, a gig whether it's a portrait session or a wedding with that framework or with that mindset that this is from your heart and it's speaking to another heart then that's all going to be spelled out rather you know on its own yeah it's, it's, it's self-evident it's a totally self-evident yeah it's it's funny when I get in conversations with photographers, and I, let's say they saw a really cool movie recently, and they they really connected with it, and they're so passionate to tell me, yeah. and then we turn to their photography, and I think it seems like a lot a lot of it is maybe they've looked at their websites or other images, and and they're just they're discouraged because they're ca getting comparative, yeah. and in that co comparison mode, they minimize yeah. what they used to be passionate about in that room with a yeah. glass of wine, that's right, and they have to kind of revisit right. that over right. and over again, right. and, and stay in love right. with that thing. Listen, you come to my studio and you'll find 800 portfolio pieces, 800 at least, because I still print. I make all my work current and I remember visiting a, a local studio and uh, she was showing me her work and I s looked a little dated to me. So I asked her, I said, wow, how old is this album? And she said, oh, about eight years. I said, really? She said, yeah, it still works for me. Oh, mm. and your eye hasn't changed in eight years, really? You haven't changed in eight years. Because I have to say that your eye changes as you grow as a human being, not just older, but as you grow as a human being, um, emotionally and otherwise, your eye starts to change. Again, you're expressing who you are by the use of the camera. Okay, You're expressing yourself. Like I said, it's not just about the moment, it's also about how you feel about that moment. And that changes over the years. And so I constantly print. And so each time I come back from a job, 15 years later, I'm still excited about my little babes that I found in the woods. And I'm printing, like by Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm printing up my 11, 14, 16 by 20s. And yes, they're in a pile, and some of them get mounted, and some of them sit in a beautiful box still. But I revisit them constantly, and I've seen over the years that my eye has changed somewhat. Because I've changed, and I'm still, doing commentary do you, do you, based on who I am. Do you think there's something about taking the effort, because immediately what flashed my mind is, you know, the new school thought, it's like, yeah, I'll have an iPad and I'll just put them on there and that's how I'll revisit. Yeah. But do you think there's something in actually taking the time to, yeah. to do something that's harder, yeah. to actually print it out yeah. and get it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, iPad's too easy. iPhone's too easy to, to show, hey, here, look at my portfolio. No, yeah. no, 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 that's, I don't want to see that. To, to actually go to the process of color correcting, Printing, Maybe not liking the print, yeah. should have burned and dodged a little, a little more. bit to get yeah. them right. Yeah, no, and then yeah. really till yeah. like sings like nobody's funny. business, and then you have that image that you are so proud of, that you're so connected to, and then when you can pitch that from that feeling, it's like nothing else. It really is it's just amazing. Well, we're almost out of time, so, so I want to be careful here. But uh, I did hear from a, a few guys that you're having some trouble logging in, and I apologize for that. But uh, if you want to get your questions in last minute and you can't log in, just go ahead and uh, type in at Dane Sanders in your message and I'll get it on Twitter and I'll try to get them, especially you Susan, I saw your, your message there. But we do have a couple folks who have questions here. First I'll bring in our, our faithful video question asker, Chris Dowsett from Canada. And let me uh, bring him on now. Hey Chris, Can you see me or no? good to see you. Um, or at least hear you. I'll, I'll go through the hardware again. So I, Are you there? Can you see me or not? Uh, we can't see you, Chris, but we, we can, can hear, hear you. you. Uh, how about I'll, I'll go through the hardware again? So I, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the call for now, but come back again and we'll take some text questions, okay? All right. So uh, Katrina, let's get to yours because uh, you've been very patient, very pragmatically. Um, uh, Katrina, we were asked the question: How best can I bring the clients from a phone call to a physical meeting to better sell myself? Again, you know, uh, personality is even perceived over the phone. So. 
whenever I take a phone call, the first thing I do is I just let myself be who I am. I'm very excited on the phone. I talk about my work. Uh, I try not to talk too much about money unless they're you know insistent, insisting on it. Uh, and I explain to him simply, look, you have to see the pieces in person. It, 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 they're nothing like, and the reason I do this, they're nothing like they are on my website. You have to see them in person. Is I literally want them in front of me because again, I'm not pitching the work. They think I, I, I'm, I'm showing them a difference, and there is a difference, by the way, to see the actual double weight fiber based print mm -hmm. or the beautiful printed uh, uh, digital image that I have that's mounted properly and it's signed, uh, and have them hand it and hold it because what I what I try to do is when they sit in front of you. What, you're, what I try and access is, is auditory, the visual, the olfactory, all the sensories uh, I hope are working. So that's, there's a candle burning that smells of lavender, there's a bowl of fruit in front of them. Uh, I tell a story while they're listening to music, soft music in the background. And it's all connected because, it, again, it's about the experience. I start that at the phone call. There's usually music playing in the background softly. They hear my excitement in my voice, and I get very excited about my stuff. And um, that's that's the only way I can tell you. Besides, uh, you know. Well, for fun, can we can we do a little role play? Sure. So let's pretend I'm calling you. Yeah. All right. And all right. I'm that guy. All right. Okay. No, I, I, let's pretend I'm a woman. Cause, all right. Because yeah. they're always all right. they're calling. All right. So, all right. so ring, ring, ring. Um, is Hi, this, studio. Is, is this? Is this Joe Busing? Yes, it is. The Joe Busing? Oh, no, it's just Joe. <laughs> it's just Joe. <laughs> Come on. Who's this? Uh, oh, okay, I'll be the guy. Uh, uh, my name is Dane Sanders, and my wife will just not stop bugging me. She oh. went on your website. She loves your images. Uh, I'm kind of freaked out because I know there's, with my wife, there's a direct proportion, or my future wife, there's a direct proportion to uh, what she likes and expensive. Oh, sure, and, and, sure, I, and sure. I'm terrified of expensive. Totally understand, Dane. Um, and, uh, but when I saw pictures of people like Steven Spielberg and uh, uh, everyone on the planet on your site, I just kind of freaked out. And so just if you could help me really quickly before I, I even end it, because my wife doesn't know that I'm calling. Sure, sure, sure. Wife, no and, worries. And I just want to make sure that we can even afford it before right. I get our hopes up. Can you just tell me your price? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Hang on a second. So, so first of all, congratulations, Dane. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no I'm worries. really excited. When, when are you getting married? I just want to make sure the date's available. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, um, getting married. I'm glad that I'm holding this up. It's hilarious. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it too, okay? That's how funny this is. I'm doing the same thing. So, uh, we're getting married uh, in Napa. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, what date? Uh, let's say, uh, well, I called you in advance because we're going to save for this thing, but it's going to be August of next year. Okay, okay, cool, cool, is cool. Too, too far no, 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 I'm, I'm good. And, and then uh, the date was? Uh, the 16th. Okay, good, good, okay. good. Yep, I'm available. And uh, how many guests? So you're gonna have you think? It'd be pretty intimate, probably about 80 people. Okay, cool, cool. That's that's nice. And we're gonna be an open field. This should be really beautiful. Oh, I love it. I love it already. Yeah. Oh, that's that's amazing. So, I, I, you what on my website that you saw compelled you to make to make the phone call? Which images? Were there any ones that stuck out? There were. Well, there's two, there's a bunch of images, but the reality was. Uh, it was the whole feel. Like I yes. just felt like I knew the. I wanted to know these people. There's st the whole stories and old oh, people's that's wrinkles great. and. That's great. But I gotta tell you honestly, it's that one picture of that woman uh, with the with the, the mural in the background of the, oh, the man. bathing. Yeah, that's my favorite photo still today. I it, call it life imitating art. Oh, it's an awesome it's, photo. It's just one of those found moments, you know. Uh, and this, for me, this is what weddings are about. Is I'm here to capture the essence of the person in the moment. That's what I'm after. I want to tell your story. It's not going to be a story like anybody else's story. It's unique just to you guys. So should I be freaked out about the whole Steven Spielberg piece? No, 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 no. Don't be freaked out. I treat him just like anybody else. Uh, we're all the same. It's nice you to tr it's nice you to treat Steven Spielberg as as much as you treat me. That's yeah, well, great. that's that's how it is. He is just like you, Dane. He's just like you. You know, and the the best thing you can do because I really like you to see these pieces in person because some of the stuff is shot on film. Some some of the digital images have some special things done to them. I mount them, and I would love to meet you because I think it's really important the relationship that we would be able to establish in the front side of this thing would be wonderful so if there's a way for you to come in and I would love to in person show you these images talk about them and find out what your needs are okay and uh, and your expenses and let's see if we can work out something because my packages we can customize our packages so okay. if there's something that's you know whatever it might be if you need it adjusted we can adjust it with losing an hour adding an hour, whatever you want done we can work out well okay here's the thing is I, I just want to hear from you Joe that I can trust you that you'll You'll take care of us somehow, and if we're out of range, we can't pull it off. That'll be I'll a, let you know. You'll let me I'll know. I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Absolutely. I just yeah, come in. 
Give us a holler when you can come in, okay. and let's sit down and talk. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty compelled. That yeah. was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so, thanks for that question, Katrina. And if this was helpful for you guys, please let us know. Uh, and then we have um, uh, a couple more questions. Let's try Chris again and see how this works. Um, and uh, it's a little loud in here, Chris, so we'll here. see. And sometimes it pops up, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, we can't see you, Chris, but at least ask the question. Uh, okay, well, this, this um, has a little apparently bit of I'm not delay, showing so up again. No problem, it's all but, good. but we can hear you. I'm most interested in... Uh, Go ahead. Okay, well, this, this has a little bit of a delay, so I'm just going to start talking. Um, I am most interested in... Uh, I'm most interested in how you approach becoming a more interesting person. And I think that um, taking on maybe challenges in your own life and um, expanding yourself plays more into being a pro photographer than just a photographer because you are selling yourself as the package. Um, you, you see in a lot of different people uh, who live their photographic life, life publicly, like Jeremy Cowart and uh, David Shemin and Joey Lawrence, they all, well Joey Lawrence is famous for, for saying that he uh, has a critical balance between his personal work and commercial work and one could not be without the other. Yeah, and I'm wondering, as a professional photographer, is it more important fact to take on those challenges and become more interesting person as a professional photographer like because there's a lot of the fact that you have to sell your yourself with with your photos because there's a lot of like granted there's a lot of crazy artists out there that will stay in their basement and they'll make masterpieces but uh, they're not exactly the the most likable people or the most personable people right so yeah well that's, I guess that's my question how, yeah. how you feel about that great no, question Chris Thank no you. absolutely I, I agree with you I think for me and I can only talk uh, about me. It is important that um, I explore more about who I am and how that affects my work. So I'm always delving into my, my psyche uh, as to why I'm taking these photos and why I'm pitching it this way. Uh, we're in the wedding field and interestingly enough it tends to be a very emotional arena mm -hmm. and I'm a very emotional person and just as I said earlier on stage, uh, maybe a little TMI, but you know, I had some horrific experiences as a child growing up where I was lacking uh, my mother who left me when I was young and uh, I had a wicked stepmother who beat me and abused me. Uh, I had no role models. So what I find to be true for me at this moment in my life, and I'm 60, is that there's still that little five-year-old in me that needs to express or be felt like it was taken care of when it he never was when he was a child. So I seek weddings out simply because I see the love between a man and a woman, a husband and a wife, a father and a mother. Uh, all of those things come to mind when I see all these beautiful emotionally interacting moments and I'm drawn to him like a moth to fire because uh, of who I am. And so now that I've tapped into that, I'm absolutely in the correct arena for right. me to express myself because weddings tend to be about emotions and love and future and all of that. And that little guy in me is being healed by virtue of me working this arena. And so I think it's imperative to kind of find out why it is you're doing these gigs, you know? Why, are, why, do, you, why do you shoot weddings? Why? Ask that question. It can't just be, be about the money. There's something else about weddings that wedding photographers will flock to go do besides money. Yeah. So if you can identify that, you'll identify a piece of the puzzle that's you. Yeah. And I think that's really important to discover if you want to um, grow as an artist. And if I'm hearing you right, Joe, it sounds like it's not even... It's not like trying to be interesting. It's like, no, I'm just going to figure out, I'm going to be with me. Yeah, yeah who, just who, who you am are. I? Yeah. And put that out there. Yeah, good, bad, and ugly. Right. And, yeah. it, and it, it, at least in my experience, I've been shocked to see, like parts of me that I don't see as attractive or whatever, it's always surprising to me that, if I'm honest, yeah. the authenticity is compelling yeah. and people connect to it. Yeah. They're like, I feel that too. Yeah. Right? And I can relate to that. Yeah. And, and beyond, you, you had me at Joe. When we did the little phone call <laughs> thing, you're like, just call me Joe. I was like, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh no, that's <laughs> I like you. No, dude, that's and, it. And I and I, I and just so you guys know, this isn't a shtick. This is this is yeah, the real life. Deal. And, life. And I just I'm re really moved by that. So thank you. Thank I appreciate you. it. No, you're welcome. And and we are over time, so we're gonna we're gonna call it for today, guys. But uh, if this is valuable to you, please, 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 uh, give a shout out and, and say thanks to at Joe yeah. with two S's. Yeah. B U I S S I N K. And um, uh, really grateful for all you do for our industry. And I know that. Thank you. This next, to you. this next year you're going to be doing a ton of, of shooting and yeah. kind of less, less of the public talking. eye yeah. and I think uh, we're going to be at a loss for that but um, 
uh, whenever this kind of opportunity comes up, I, I just want to let you know I'm a huge fan. Of Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of yours. Oh. You're amazing too, and I'm glad you're in our.